Now let's do this. So we're told the static rectangular object shown is partially submerged in a liquid with a unit weight of 12,000 newton per cubic meter. So that's going to be the unit weight of the liquid this object is actually in. It's floating in this liquid. The object has a width of one meter into the page. So that one meter is the width. Think of it in 3D. You can imagine this like this. So it's like this and it has this width here this dimension of one meter obviously like I would extend this and show this it's just a three-dimensional object with a width into the page of one meter so that's commonly shown and you can always remember that the width is into the page so then we're told that the specific gravity of the object is most nearly what so what's the goal we want to find the specific gravity of this rectangular object so let me write that on the side find the specific gravity of the object so specific gravity we denote it as sg and that's going to be for the object that's what we want to find then we're given like a few things but the majority of what we're given is actually in the diagram so this is let's denote it as a given and if we look at the problem statement and go back it says partially submerge that keyword tells us it's going to be floating this thing is floating it's not sinking or it's not submerged it's actually floating and they use another keyword it's static so it's in equilibrium static equilibrium partially submerged so it's hydrostatic conditions but we're looking at a floating rectangular object then we're told the unit weight is going to be 12,000 newton per cubic meter and that's going to be for the liquid so this liquid is unknown it's an unknown liquid we don't know what it is it's not water because we know water at standard conditions is going to be about 9810 newton per cubic meter so that's what they're referring to there that's the liquid and this is the top water surface of that liquid this is the top and we know we have air we have atmosphere or air on the top as well and we're given the dimensions width and this height this distance is given and this is also given to be 0.3 so that's basically everything we're given and let me just denote the width into the page is actually that one meter as we discussed so now let's dive into that solution so what would you do what would be your first step so what i would do first is i know i want to find the specific gravity but i need to know a definition for it what is specific gravity so what we can do here is actually use the fe handbook and let's go under fluid mechanics in the bookmarks so we just click that in the bookmarks and we can go here so it tells us specific gravity sg is going to be the unit weight divided by the unit weight of water but this is tricky this unit weight is going to be the unit weight of anything wood iron water oil anything of any unknown liquid or body or any anything may be so this you have to always know it's x it's like the unit weight of any unknown x and in this case it's what we're going to do is denote this as the unit weight of the object that's what we will denote it at divided by the unit weight of water it's always divided by the unit weight of water and we can also relate this to densities it will work as well we take the density of the unknown object or liquid whatever it may be divided by the density of water and that gives us the specific gravity so note specific gravity is always relative to water with respect to the water and that's going to be denoted on the bottom which is density water and the unit weight of water and we know water if you can imagine this you put the unit weight of water divided by the unit weight of water they just cancel you can put 62.4 divided by 62.4 and we get one so the specific gravity of water is always one always one for water and what we can do let me show you something down here we know that for water at standard conditions which is what we're going to assume unless they otherwise specify we know we will always assume standard conditions and this is what we'll do in this case we're going to say the density of water is going to be 1000 kilogram per cubic meter and the unit weight or the specific weight both mean the same thing unit weight is the specific weight is going to be 98 newton per cubic meter for water so that's going to be important we're going to use that and this is that fundamental definition so what i'm going to do is go back and denote that so we're going to say the specific gravity so no it's going to be the specific gravity of the object that's what we want to find is going to equal to the unit weight 
or the specific weight of the object note this is anything that's unknown that we don't know divided by the unit weight of water which in this case we're looking at SI units meters so it's going to be 9018 newton per cubic meter SI units at standard conditions unless they tell you in the problem statement a temperature you use the fluid stables to get it to get that unit weight or they tell you it straight up in that problem statement you just put it down there but every time if they do not always assume standard conditions 9810 newton per cubic meter so then now we are at this step we're making progress and this is what we're going to eventually apply now after this we're kind of stuck we know we have a floating body there's a floating body and anytime we have a floating body we have to go back and rely on the principle on the concept or theory and we're going to look at the Archimedes principle Archimedes principle which relates to buoyancy so we know in this case this thing is floating and it's floating and it has a certain volume which we call a displaced volume that is occurring here and what I'm gonna do is denote that displaced volume let me show you that displaced volume is just the volume that's displaced so it can be the whole object if it's completely submerged that would be the displaced volume but the displaced volume in this case I'll denote it as the following so let me show that and it would be everything below the top water surface or the top liquid surface so this is going to be what is being displaced so this is what we call as this placed so that's going to be a fundamental idea that you always have to look out for when we're looking at Archimedes principle and buoyancy and now let's define this idea of Archimedes principle further so what I'm going to do is just skip some pages and there's a section called Archimedes principle and buoyancy in the FE handbook so first of all there's two fundamental key things we have to know number one and number two that's basically all we need to solve this in fact number two is what we're gonna apply but it says that the buoyant force exerted on a submerged or floating body is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body so we know we always develop this so-called buoyant force which is gonna go up this buoyant force exerted on this body in this case a rectangular object it will equal to the weight of the fluid displaced so note the key word here is the fluid displaced so that buoyant force is going to equal to the weight of the fluid displaced so what we can say is this is the fluid displaced and this fluid displaced will have a center of gravity let's say let me call it g for center of gravity it will have a weight it will have a weight and it's going to be the weight of the fluid displaced this weight of the fluid displaced is going to equal to the force buoyant the buoyant force so no it has to be just the bottom whatever submerged we call it the fluid displaced so that's going to be number one and we're not going to use that to solve this what we're going to actually do to solve this is number two it says a floating body displaces a weight of fluid equal to its own weight i.e. it's a floating body in equilibrium so we know in our case it's static it's in equilibrium and we can see by the diagram I believe you would say okay this is floating this is floating in a liquid and we know it says here for that to happen for this to float it has to displace the weight of fluid equal to its own weight so the weight of the rectangular object in this case has to equal to the weight of the fluid displaced that's what this is saying again the weight of the rectangular object has to equal to the weight of the fluid displaced or the weight that the rectangular object displaces and that's what we will use we're going to use that definition there from number two so let me go down and denote that we're gonna say is for from number two in the FE handbook we're gonna say that the weight of the object has to equal to the weight of the fluid we're gonna say fluid displaced and that is gonna be 
the and this results in a floating body in equilibrium so now we're kind of stuck again we know the weight of the object or the weight w we have to somehow relate that to these terms specific gravity density unit weight how can we like simplify that weight term and get it in terms of unit weight or density there is an equation for that so we know what i can do is show you that let me fluid mechanics it's kind of hitting it's not so obvious but this i want you to know make sure you have this on your equation sheet anytime you're dealing with buoyancy archimedes principle this is that fundamental definition for weight we have to always rely on this and the way i would remember this if you don't want to memorize it is actually using this just you can we're not going to look at density we're going to look at unit weight because we define specific gravity in unit weight we're going to say the unit weight is going to be the weight divided by the volume unit weight is the weight divided by the volume so let me go here we're going to say on the side let me do this here the unit weight by definition is going to be the weight of anything divided by the volume now we know that the weight is unit weight times volume always so what we're going to do is simplify this we're going to say the weight of the object is going to respectively equal to the unit weight of the object times the volume of what v stands for volume of the object everything here is object that rectangular object then the weight of the fluid displaced same idea it's going to be the unit weight of the fluid displaced fluid i'll just call it displaced disp and we're going to say times the volume of the fluid displaced so that is that part so now we're making progress we have the weights defined something in terms of that unit weight which is what we want always when we're looking at these types of problems for buoyancy and archimedes principle so then we know what we can do now is start plugging numbers in we know the unit weight of the fluid displaced is actually the 12,000. So that's going to be of the liquid because the fluid is what's being displaced. So the liquid is the fluid displaced. So note that that one is going to be 12,000. That's fine. Then we need the volumes and the unit weight of the object is actually what we're going to find. We're going to find this put it in here we know this is going to be 9810 and we can ultimately solve for our specific gravity of the object now we're going to say that the unit weight of the object is going to be multiplied by the volume of the object so just note now it's going to be the entire volume of the object not the displaced portion just the whole object so it's this whole rectangle so the volume there is just the volume of a rectangle we do what we take the base times the height times the width into the page so since it's going to be the 1.5 meter times this is going to be 1.1 meter times the one meter into the page for the whole object so what we will say is we take the 1.5 meter times the 1.1 meter which is the height times the one meter which is the width into the page so although this will cancel and we will see that that's not really we don't necessarily have to have that given it will cancel but that's just there and we'll put it in there so then that equals to so now the unit weight of the fluid displaced no it's going to be the fluid that's going to be displaced is going to be the liquid it's the liquid and it has this unit weight that's given so it's going to be 12,000 so we take that 12,000 newton per cubic meter then we multiply that by the volume of the fluid displaced so now be very careful the volume of the fluid displaced it has to be the displaced fluid this whole thing so this what would be that volume we take the 1.5 times the height so this is the depth of the fluid displaced this is a very important parameter or dimension depth of the fluid displaced times the base times the width into the page so what we will do is take the 1.5 meter times the 0 0.8 meter the depth of the fluid displaced multiplied by the one meter which is the width into the page so now notice some things cancel so we know that the 1.5s actually cancel the one meter actually cancel we don't even need that width then what we can do is solve for the that unit weight of the object the unit weight of the object so if i do the math there 
I just take that 12,000. So do this with me. 12,000 times that 0 0.8. And we take that divided by the 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1, and we get about 87. 27.27 and the unit should be newton per cubic meter for these unit weight or specific weight units so now we're basically done all we do at this point is go back to this fundamental definition and find the specific weight of the specific gravity of the object so the specific gravity of the object we take the unit weight of the object which we just found 8727.27 newton per cubic meter so now my question for you, what do you put on the bottom? The unit weight of water at standard conditions, unless they otherwise specify in the problem statement, is always 98.10 Newton per cubic meter. So that's what we will do. We will put 98.10 Newton per cubic meter. Now we can find the specific gravity of the object. And doing that, let me see. So we get the 8727 divided by 98.10. And we get about 0. 0.89 and that would be the specific gravity of the object so if we go above we would just pick b it should be b in this so this is out this is out this one you can eliminate just to as a process of elimination and actually give you less answer choices to work with this we can eliminate like logically and i'll show you why we know that for water, let's look at a scale in terms of specific gravity. Water has a specific gravity of how much? We said that before, it's going to be 1. Specific gravity of 1. So we know anything above 1, so anything to the right of 1, will make an object sink. So let's say it's going to be 1.5 here. We know an object will sink an object will sink. Anything below 1, let's say it's going to be the 0 0.85. Anything below 1, we know an object will actually float. So based on this, we're going to say anything above 1 will make an object sink. Anything below 1, an object would float. So in our case, note that 0 0.72, 0 0.89, 0 0.95 are all possible they're all possible answer choices because if we look here this object is floating it should float if it's floating it has to be less than one a specific gravity that's less than one but this one we could eliminate the 1.20 because that tells me it's gonna sink but that's not what's happening here this thing is not sinking it's not fully down in that liquid below that top surface so this one we could actually eliminate just to save us time and actually give us just three answer choices to work with so always try to do that as you're solving questions and thinking about the concept just eliminate the ones that do not make sense so i hope you found this helpful and i'll see you in the next video